There we go. Jeff White with you, Kevin on the board, our guest host today, Tom Cohen, hanging out here with us uh, as we've been out here on the patio. It, we are willing to acknowledge that it just did get cold. Temperature dropped like Temperature 10 dropped. degrees. That sun goes down and happens in a hurry. That's like okay. I can, I can but you know what? Breath. It is December. There's a lot of Christmas lights. It's kind yeah, of fitting. It feels festive. You know? yeah. And yeah. there is no clouds. Like, it was beautiful this morning. Head to the gym. The moon. Oh, my uh, God. Gorgeous. You went to the gym when the moon was still out? Yeah, my man goes to the gym every morning, like, at 5 a.m. Wow. Yeah. Like, 5 yeah. of the latest, right? That's like you're running late if you do that, right? No, I'm the, they open at 5.30, and I'm one of the people that's like, come on, come on. You're like pounding yeah. on the door. Yeah. Let me in. He's yeah. that guy. I got to hit He's the treadmill. Guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, we've established that Kevin's a masochist. It's all hip thrusts. Uh, I don't do treadmill. It's <laughs> hip thrusts and no eye contact with anyone else. No, the... never. Yeah. Never. <laughs> just, uh, like, just like here. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's like a person over there specifically. They're like, no, don't look at me anymore, no. man. Please stop. Yeah, please, please stop. <laughs> they actually asked for their check and left quite, yeah. a, quite a while like, ago. We will pay you to let us leave. <laughs> will you? We haven't <laughs> even <laughs> ordered. Uh, we welcome back uh, David Olson with us. It's been a minute, David, but we're glad to have you back on Pub Talk. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, last time we were here, you you had you were in the weeds with the Kelp Journal. Oh yeah, and the Kelp Journal is still going on. I That's highly fun. encourage people to check it out. It is. I, I try to explain it to people, and that is the hard part for me, <laughs> yeah. because I, I tell people that I know that uh, you know either are in the coastal lifestyle or have an interest in certain things and. The spectrum that it covers and the concept that it is, it's really hard to describe to people. Yeah, in a sound bite. Uh, it, well, it, so it's a literary magazine. That's really, really what it is. Um, That's very, very modest yeah, as far as a description. Liter it's a literary, literary journal. So we publish uh, short stories, poetry, um, and some multimedia stuff from people around the world. So we, you know, we, we, have, we have authors from uh, countries all, all up. Anyway. We get quality work from from all over the place. We we weed through it. We get thousands of submissions a year, and we find the best of the best. And we have a pretty diverse. Uh, and this is all online. That's online, and we do a literary supplement, so you can actually buy uh, a physical copy for like mm, okay. for, for like six ninety nine, you know, on Amazon, which has all of the written words. Right portion. Yeah. And is there any? Are there guidelines, or is it pretty much anything can can be submitted? Uh, and so each um, <clears throat> each subject has a set of guidelines. So if you submit poetry. Uh, uh, fiction, fiction, or you know, um, essay, or whatever, whatever genre you're working with. Um, there are some guidelines, but it's pretty broad. You know, the only thing we say in our in our sort of mission statement is that you know we're ocean, we're sort of uh, ocean conservation forward. So mm. we do we do prefer themes that deal with ocean surfing, right. nature kind of stuff like that. So. so like you wouldn't want oil companies submitting <laughs> their their big their oil was doing the anti <laughs> you know. Uh, for, what I love is you guys kind of you, you on one on one piece you can dive into the ecology uh, of something. On another you might dive into the culture of a coastal town. Like you you guys do a great job of putting spotlights on many different aspects. Because the ocean is one of those things that, like, you can immerse yourself in literally surfing, diving, whatever. But also, it just living near the coast, it has this effect on the lifestyle and perspective on people. It does. The ocean, just being, being, being near, or around, or inside the ocean, it definitely has a physiological effect on people. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I, I just think you guys do such a great job of... Of, uh, of taking that, uh, yeah, yeah, and, and exploring that for different people, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things we do is we try and promote and uh, um, and amplify, you know, marginalized and and uh, voices and emerging writers. So we, we pair sort of, uh, uh, you know, especially with our anthologies and stuff, we pair sort of big-name writers with, uh, with emerging writers and emerging voices, so it kind of amplifies people that are starting out uh, with their writing with, with some people that are a little bit more... Um, Advanced. So, for instance, our, our current issue, we've got a, a, a bunch of uh, sort of newer writers that are being published in the new in the issue that comes out on December fifteenth, by the way. Um, and like, you know, I have an interview with like Jane Smiley, who's a Pulitzer Prize winner that lives in Carmel Valley. Uh, got an interview with her in there. So, you know, it's just a little That's bit. That's very cool. Kind of, yeah. I mean, for people that don't know her name, like it's much bigger than you were very modest again, <laughs> and and like the like. She's very gracious to to do the interview for us. Right? But, but give, give a little of her accolades because I want people to understand like this is the context of what they're diving in with this. Yeah, sure. You know, I mean, um, we've we work with some. I mean, we we work in with and publish some of the biggest names in writing too. So you yeah, know, we've we've interviewed and have worked with like Andy Weir, who's like the the Martian guy, right? So uh, yeah. 
um, you know, Jane, she's, she's great. And, uh, you know, so we had this anthology come out uh, last time I was on the show a year or so ago. And so we had the same thing. So we had some bigger names, New York Times bestselling writers with some sort of up and coming crime writers. And those, the anthologies are specifically surf noir. I call them surf noir. So they're kind of like, they all have to take place in a coastal community. And generally I like to have some surf characters type type in there west coast not just west coast okay. any surf community in the world really so any beach community um in fact we do have some like uh, inland beaches like so uh and the last one we actually had some uh, bombay beach which is the uh salton sea that Ooh, was a story okay. that took place in the salton sea so kind of all over the place strange place yes. yeah it is yeah. Like, it feels like the apocalypse out yeah there. um and then we have another anthology coming out uh, with the same sort of a scenario on January 15th when we're doing a big book launch down at, in Hermosa Beach Museum. Um, so we've got some, you know, big time, you know, uh, writers with some emerging writers and pairing them up uh, with the surf noir theme and launching that book. So that'll be fun. Well, I, I wanted to give all credit to the Kelp Journal because I, I do talk about it quite a bit. It's funny. I, mean, I feel like you and I try to hang out all the time. Me and you can relate. And actually, all of us can relate. Like, <laughs> yeah. we, we all want to hang out, and it just doesn't happen as much. But yeah. but I'm a huge fan of this. I've actually, like, I've, I've sent it to friends on the East Coast, people around here. I'm like, this is one of the most unique concepts that you can really just dive into and, and just cover a whole lot of facets. That being said, I want people to go check it out. But we have another thing to talk about, and that's you've got a brand new novel out, man. We do. So, um, yeah, I have a I have a pen name, uh, Nick Xander Wolf. Um, I, I have to ask the origins. Yeah, where, where did that come from? So, yeah. I love it. By yeah. the way, it was well two reasons. One, I, I'm a professional, so I I, uh, I own an insurance brokerage, Olson and Olson Insurance Services, and so I wanted to sort of have uh, have a a separation between my professional life and my and my sort of writing life. It's a it's a dark sort of noirish th thriller. So you know, it's an 80s. I call it an 80s crime noir thriller you know so it takes place in 1988 um and the name yeah, it's the year i graduated high school is it it's a good year so, that, there you, you go know, see, so <laughs> nice. you're hooked right now yeah right? exactly so, how, how'd you pick 88 uh well it yeah i gotta read it no <laughs> fair that's fair. the crux that's of the book first yeah. chapter yeah. starts in the 60s but um so and the, the actual pen name itself, Nick Xander Wolf, uh, uh, David Olson is, I think there's 637 million David Olsons on the planet. Uh, so it's, uh, Nick Xander Wolf is the only one, and it's, it was meant to be an anagram of Franklin W. Dixon. So I was kind of playing with the letters. Franklin W. Dixon, uh, if you know, is the Hardy Boys. Uh, it's the pen name behind the Hardy Boys series. Yeah, cool. It was like the thing that I loved the most when I was like in second, third grade. Like, uh, I read all of them like three that's times. Same, my yeah. God. So, so I kind of consider that one of the my you know uh, impetuses to creative writing. But anyway, that's what so, got you in. That's so, it. that was your hook. Yeah, that was my hook when I was a little kid. So uh, I was trying to play with the letters and make a new pen name out of that pen name. Uh, I I missed an N, but <laughs> so it ended up a, an almost anagram. It's like the inception <laughs> it's, of it's pen. Very close. So how do you know you're the only Nick Xander Wolf? And uh, well, I just I mean I Google it. And okay, it's the only He's thing. Got a Wikipedia thing that up. Put it yeah. in the Google so machine. Then see you're what official. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and uh, we're doing a book launch for this on Saturday uh, at the Henry Miller Library. Yes, with the great Magnus Torin. I, we love Magnus he's here. Right? He's, yeah, he's fantastic. Uh, the Fragonards are going to play an opening set. It's local local uh, folk indie band. They're great. They, we yeah, love the Fragonards. They're wonderful. Yeah. And uh, which, by the way, Fragonards, if you're listening, I'm still waiting on MP3 from you guys. <laughs> you guys I want to play you on the radio, but I need some help. <laughs> gotta, gotta get yeah. the music. Yeah. So yeah, they'll be there. Magnus will be there. It should be a good time. Some wine, appetizers, uh, uh, music, and um, some literature. So, a uh, donation, uh, ten to twenty dollar donation to the library actually gets you a book too. So, that's awesome. Yeah. And it, and if you haven't spent time on the Henry Miller Library, you're really you're you're, you're screwing yourself. It feels like a totally different universe. Yeah, like, right. Not even it's a different, different world. world. You mm -hmm. enter the library and suddenly you're in the redwoods and, and they say, well, they're, "What's their tagline? Nothing ever happens, or something." Yeah, where nothing happens. Where, where nothing, nothing happens. ever happens. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. And <laughs> I, which the irony of that is that you have readings like this. Yeah, right, uh, they're always uh, doing some really cool art. Oh, uh, the, I've, just, I've seen the I've seen Ryan Adams, Jason Isbell. Yeah, the yeah. Flaming Lips and the Chili Peppers there. Yeah, yeah, Arcade place. Fire as well. Yeah, yeah, no. In this little place. And if you go <laughs> see this place, you'll be like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Magical, <laughs> unassuming, little cabiny venue that just it just it sinks its way into your soul and you love it. Yes. Yeah. And, and Magnus and his team, like Mike and everybody else there, they do a great job of uh, protecting maybe isn't the right word. Preserving, maybe. Preserving, yeah. yeah they, they, they allow that vortex 
to operate on its own as it is. It's a vibe. It is. It, it is, is yeah. very much a vibe. Yeah. Yes. And it, it is where the, the fact that nothing happens there is why awesome things do happen there. Right. Yeah. Nothing bad happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Kind well, of. I, I, I think the beauty of, like, I, I think of, like, some of the moments that I've been there where it, if it happened in L.A. or the Bay Area, mm. People would be scrapping and, and like yeah. jockeying and all that, and then you go there and it's just like, oh, excuse me, and it's flea because it's, <laughs> it's, it's like set, cool it's without trying to be cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, not to mention he lives like right across the street, you know. But <laughs> like, th- there's something very special about that place. I've always thought that the the unassuming nature of it, and, and really Big Sur in general, and kind of the extension where we're, where we're at now is, hey, it's cool. Whatever you're in, like it, we don't care if you're Brad Pitt or whatever. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'll open the door for you, and you're welcome, whatever. But, like, no yeah. no fuss. Yeah. And, and to me, that's that's the beauty where you allow things to really mm-hmm. grow when there's not this. It's the lack of pretense. It is. Yeah. Pretension yeah. is the word I was yeah. trying to yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 exactly. It's definitely true. You know, and they they support emerging artists to the biggest names in art, too, right? So Yeah. Well, I think, well, that, and, and to that point, they value both equally. They do. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. And support them. Magnus will go out of his way to support the biggest names. To the smallest. Yeah, he he, if it's if it comes from a very genuine place, he just wants people to experience it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, it, this is going to be very cool. So you get a live concert, and and then you're going to get to talk. Yep. Well, yeah. Magnus and I are doing a little just back and forth Q and A. I'm I'm trying to get him to sing the uh, Marilyn Monroe Henry Miller song. Have you guys ever heard him sing, sing that? I've not heard mm-hmm. him sing it. Yeah. 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 You know the song though. Yes, yeah, I do yeah, know the yeah, song. He, jam, he can rock that song. <laughs> Magnus is a rocker. Yeah. If, nice. if, if anyone has ever. Well, if your name is Magnus. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to. It just, comes with some yeah, responsibility. Yeah, to you rock. have to live up to. Yeah. It, the, yeah. But here's the thing: his humility trumps that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Like it, the the man has literally sw- sailed a, around the world. Yeah. Right. But have you ever you met a boring yeah. Magnus? <laughs> you know, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Never. <laughs> Never. He does. He he, uh, he used to do it. I don't know if he's uh, has plans to do it again. But he does a Magnus around the world like a uh, little session, right? Yeah. So he shows you the pictures, like. He, Literally sailed every single leg of the, wow. yeah. of yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah. And then decided, I was like, I'm going to settle here. Yeah. I yeah. like it here. Yeah. yeah. He, he's a steward is what he is. He's a great he guy. saw the Henry Miller Library. He's like, oh, man, I don't want to leave this spot. <laughs> no kidding. Well, yeah. I, I do want to like dive in quick before we got to go. I want to sure. dive in a little bit more about the concept of the novel because uh, we, we've covered the, the pen name, which I think, again, that is such a great pen name. But uh, this... This feels like a little bit of an extension from what we touched on with the Kelp Journal. Yeah. Like, it, it's a little bit more seedy. Yep. It, it dives a little bit into the, the characters uh, with it. But the, the concept of this, like I said, based in 88, moving forward, like, th- there's a lot involved with this. It's an interesting, it's an interesting, the way the book was written is rather fascinating, even to me, because I, st- um, I, I, went, I did a two-year novel writing program at Stanford, and I wrote, I wrote, a, I wrote a book there. And then I got into grad school at UC Riverside, and I, um, I started a new project. And my thesis advisor uh, hated it. And he's like, the only thing good in this whole project is like this backstory. It was like it was a short, basically a short story that I had written. And he's like, make that the book. I was like, okay. So I started from scratch. He wrote the entire book, right? And then... Um, and he's like, this is so much better. Yeah, you can graduate now. And then, that, so, <laughs> but that he was, was going to hold you back. He was, no, he did. He did. Yeah. 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 So, um, that was back in 2018. So I've been, I've revisited, I've, re- I've, there's been teams of people that have helped me, helped me along the way working on this. I mean, yeah, you never get a book done without a lot oh, of, of, of hand wringing and consternation. Yeah. And, yeah. Like another, I mean, there's dozens of people that read through this and, and, uh, uh, including, you know, professional industry editors and, and my friends mm. from the grad school program. So um, a lot, of, a lot of uh, rewrites. I've probably rewrote it thirty times. You know. Oh, well, that's <laughs> all. Yeah, that's so it. I, I'm excited yeah. to read it because uh, just flipping through it, like I have a short attention span, so I listen to most books. Flipping through it, it has this like. I'll read it to you later if you. That like. works. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. That's going to be pub talk after dark. <laughs> yeah. But it's like it's a little bit. Um, we were talking Point Break, two days in the valley. So yeah, kiss kiss bang bang. It's got right. everything. So it's got, it's a, little got, like, it's got yeah. a little bit of a surf vibe in there. I had to throw I had to throw that in there. And it's about a kid. So I was born in Southern California, but I was my formative years were in the Central Valley. So it's about a, a young couple from the Central Valley. They get into a kerfuffle, scuffle, and they uh, accidentally they kill a, a crooked cop and they go on the run. That's it's what really happens when you get into a kerfuffle. Yeah. You kill really a cop. It's an accident. It was an accident. Yeah. It, was an accident. it just happened. I hate it when that happens. Yeah. Such so uh, there was. Uh, I mean, you'll have to see, but you know. Um, there's uh, 
there's a situation that arises where it's sort of life or death, and, and two people end up dying in that scene, actually. Um, so as a matter of self-preservation, uh, the crooked police officer also dies. But then the crooked police officer sends his bounty hunter and, they, and goes after them. So the, as a young couple, 20, they're 21 and 18, they're on the run. They're hiding out. They're trying. They're just trying everything they can to to, to get away, to stay get away, alive, yeah. and keep their relationship alive. So, um, kind of a love story, kind of dark and messed up. So, the kind of stuff everyone goes through. Yeah, the yeah. right. relationship. <laughs> yeah. That's, totally. that's the next Taylor Swift album. It is right. <laughs> exactly. Killed a dirty cop on the run. <laughs> on the, on the, lovers on the line. I could actually Taylor listen to dark. that yeah. Taylor Swift song. No, Taylor yeah. went dark. Jeff yeah. would be so into it. Yeah. Yeah. Taylor meets a white buffalo. Please, yeah. just just stop. Just go dark. <laughs> go dark. Yeah. Get an addiction. Do something. Yes. <laughs> I, I love Kill again, a cop. I've, yeah. been, I've been flipping through all this, and there's all these little nods to, like, local areas. Oh, yeah. Little Big Sur's in there. Oh, yeah. I almost wrote the Henry Miller Library into there. I think I did at one point and edited it out because I don't think it was around in, in 88. I don't know. Oh, if it yeah. Was. It may or may not have. I, I don't know. But anyway. Yeah. I like how it's fiction, but you're like, we don't want to go too fiction. <laughs> yeah. But you have a line. You're like, Henry Miller yeah. Library. Well, dates are important. Yeah. 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 Well, so there's certain things. You're right. You're absolutely right. So like, what do you fictionalize, and what? Do you no, write? that is a question. Yeah. Writers, yeah. But like, so there's a there's a, a location in Big Sur where one of the characters is hiding out, um, and it's called the, the Pfeiffer uh, Cliffs and Campground, which doesn't exist yeah. exactly under that name. Right. And but like there's a location. Dis- yeah. There's a Pfeiffer. There's a, Pfeiffer there, there's a few Pfeifers. And there's yeah. right. a few Pfeifers. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Yeah, I figured it was confusing enough with all the Pfeifers in Big Sur. You can just make up my own. <laughs> right. And it's like its own sort of. Just add another one. No one knows. Yeah, no one make another one. <laughs> Sounds real to me. Yeah. So they yeah they come through Santa Cruz, uh, Big Sur. So yeah, it's a lot of. I tried to get kind of the one of the one of the things I wanted to do. So much crime fiction is dedicated to major cities, right? There's like the 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 L.A. crime stories. Dozens, hundreds of them, right? Yeah. Writers, and there's San Francisco, there's East Coast, New York, obviously, and there's just not a lot of Central Coast. I mean, yeah. I mean there's the Central Valley, Central Coast, so I, uh, I I spend a lot of time sort of focusing on those regions. Well, I encourage people to check it out. It really is. It's such Shadow a cool Shadow Valley, that's the name of the Shadow book. Valley, yeah. yes. Uh, if you're watching on uh, Instagram at Caramel Radio, you can check it right there. We hit number one in uh, four categories last week. We ran a promotion um, on Amazon, Amazon bestseller categories. Nice. So it's not uh, bad. Yeah, we uh, we sold five or six thousand books last week, so that was good. Nice. Yeah. Smooth. Congratulations. It's starting to move man. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're excited. It's doing, cool. It's doing okay. Yeah. Very cool. Well, dude, we're excited for you. I I, I love what you're doing here. You're you're not just bringing light to the Central Coast. I I, I love that aspect, but even more so, I love how the community is supporting you in this. Uh, check out Shadow Valley, Amazon. One of the best places to get it. Are there some local bookstores uh, that can pick well, it up too? Uh, Henry Miller Library. Perfect. Right. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Aforementioned. <laughs> yeah. And do people need to get tickets for that event? By it the way? is a ticketed event. It's but it, so the way Henry Miller works usually is that you can. Um, it's a suggested donation, so you yeah. can get a ticket with or without the donation. But they are, I think the suggested donation is ten or twenty dollars. But you know, it's it comes with a book. It comes Can't with be the, that. music, food, wine. You know. Uh, some beer, so good time. Good little time. It's yeah. worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. And the donation goes to the library, so you're supporting. Uh... There you go. There you go. And, and, and people can go to. I think it's just henrymillerlibrary.org. Uh, right? Yeah, or just go to to um, uh, Eventbrite and type in Henry Miller Library, and it's on there too. And the event is when. Saturday. Saturday. At, this Saturday. Sa- this Saturday at 3. Yeah. Yeah. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. There We're you doing go. it indoors. So. No, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Yeah. Well, man, just kudos on, and congratulations. Thank you. Novel, yeah. I know that was not an easy thing. That's, That's a labor of love. It's not easy to write a novel. Six years. Yeah. Yeah. Six years. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Six yeah. years. Drafts. That's six, it. Yeah. Six, six years. Six years. <laughs> Got a couple kids along the way. Yeah. Like, all the I'm just started a new business. No yeah. big deal, yeah, right? No big deal. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. Like, it just, it just happened on its own. Uh, but, no, congratulations on that. That's a big deal. Uh, congratulations on Kelp Journal. Another thing I, I really highly suggest people to check out. But, man, like, dude, it, thank you. Thank you for doing this. This is something that, like, a lot of us on the Central Coast can take a lot of pride out of. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks, man. Thank and you. and yeah. we will hang out and surf at some point. We're going to surf. Uh, in, it will happen. In, By the way, this Peru. van is the coolest yeah, van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Peru, in Peru. Yeah. Yeah. This van's van is the coolest van on the Central really? Coast. I will nice. tell you that. What yes. kind of Seven, van do we have? It's a 1973 Dodge. Ooh. And it, it, was, it was purchased brand new by my dad and my uncle in 73. So it was preserved in my grandfather's like sh- like shed thing. On his, He was a veterinarian was at his veterinary clinic. And I pulled it out a couple of years, like about 18 months ago. And it hadn't. 
no one had been had used it in 30 years. Holy wow. cow. And so it was like, come, can I, come here, have a time capsule, this thing. Wow. So, it's anyway. epic. And how many miles are on that thing? 70,000 original miles. Jeez. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I like how you went that route, because I was thinking it was going to be Volkswagen, like everybody does. No, right. No, that no, was no. a left turn, dude. and I was not expecting <laughs> yeah. that. They're not a van. I, they like bus. Yeah. That's true. The characters, van, yeah. the characters do have a getaway car that has a Volkswagen. Uh-huh. Oh, that'd be perfect. You're not going to get far if a Volkswagen is your getaway vehicle. No. You're like, I'm four years, 20 minutes. the getaway car for something uh, that yeah, makes yeah, sense. I think it's going to, you know, be <laughs> less obvious. <laughs> to, to, to bring it full circle, like, your van is something that could have very easily been in the Beastie Boys video. Oh, yeah. Very, yeah. very yeah. easily. There yeah. you this go. thing's got a V8, so you can get away with it. Yeah, Coach E's would have loved driving that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say you could have done a version of Cash Cab around here in the Cash Van. Ooh, <laughs> there we go. There, there we go. go. Maybe there we we'll revisit. Too. Mm, Cash right. Cab. David, thanks Welcome. so much for coming yeah, on. Thanks, man. So really David, thanks for it. coming. Appreciate uh, give it. Give me your website one more time. Uh, kelpjournal.com. Perfect. Yep. Thanks. Right on, man. Appreciate awesome. it. Yep. That wraps up another Pub Talk. We do it every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Come on down. We've got a lot of cool people that live on the Central Coast. We'd love for you to meet them in person, grab a Frosty Pint, and do it. We'll be back here next Wednesday at 5 p.m. at Alvarado Street Brewing Bistro here on the Locals Radio Station for the Monterey Bay. Hey, oh.